As you probably know, if you're watching this video, in Super Metroid, Hyper Beam is a powerful weapon that you obtain at the very end of the game, right after Mother Brain kills the baby Metroid. It's fun to use it to kill Mother Brain and go through the escape sequence, but then the game's over and you lose the Hyper Beam. I always thought that it would be cool to be able to explore the planet and kill the bosses and mini bosses with the Hyper Beam. Of course, this can be done with cheat codes, like using the Game Genie, or an emulator with cheats enabled, or with a hacked version of the game. But I always thought it would be better if you could pull it off without cheat codes or hacks. Turns out, you can, with the help of a few glitches. I'll show you how. This entire video was shot using a Super Nintendo console with an original Super Metroid game cartridge, both of which were purchased in the US back in the 1990s. So this is the American, or NTSC, version of the game. I haven't tested any of this on emulators, the PAL version, etc., but I expect that it would work just fine. But let me know in the comments whether these techniques actually work off console. A word of warning, some of these glitches are pretty difficult and will take some practice to pull off consistently. Before we get started, I want to review a couple of techniques that will be required later in the video. First off, let's talk about the stationary spin jump or the vertical spin jump, which is what I'll call it in this video. To perform a vertical spin jump, briefly press the direction that you're facing, in this case left, then simultaneously let go of left and press the jump button. If done correctly, you'll move very slightly forward on the ground, but then spin jump perfectly vertically. If you hold left for too long, you'll just spin jump up and to the left. If you're facing right instead, just briefly press right and then jump. The key is to press the D-pad, left or right, very briefly prior to the jump. Also, be sure to jump as soon as you let go of the D-pad. Something slightly different happens if you hold down the dash button while performing a vertical spin jump. You will move very slightly in the direction you're facing, rather than jumping perfectly vertically. This may seem pretty insignificant, but it will be important later on. For the sake of this video, I'll just refer to this as a dash vertical spin jump, because it's the same thing as a vertical spin jump, except you hold the dash button throughout, which makes you move very slightly forward while in the air. You will also need to know how to x-ray climb to pull off the techniques shown in this video. There are multiple tutorials out there that do a great job of teaching how to x-ray climb, so I won't go into too much detail here. I provided a couple of links in the description if you need help with this technique. Briefly, x-ray climbing allows you to leave the standard confines of rooms and enter what is called out of bounds. To do this, you typically get Samus stuck in a door and then x-ray climb upwards until you are out of bounds. Once you're stuck in a door, you crouch, turn on the x-ray scope briefly, then turn it off and turn around essentially simultaneously, and that will force Samus into a standing position. If you then crouch again, Samus will rise up by five pixels. This process is repeated until you rise up enough to be out of bounds. You should get in the habit of turning off morphing ball prior to x-ray climbing, because accidentally morphing during a climb will either force you to start the climb over, or, in the worst case, force you to reset the game, depending on where you morph. Now, we're going to go over a pretty difficult technique that you'll need to pull off later on. It's easier to review the technique now, because later, the planet will be exploding, which is annoying. The goal of this technique is to get stuck in the door that is to the left of your ship. In order to get properly stuck in this door, you'll need to pull off a pretty precise shine spark. Go ahead and open the door to the left of your ship. Then, charge up a shine spark just before you pass through the door. As soon as you enter the next room, turn around and shoot open the door. Then face left and moonwalk to the right until Samus's visor is just barely fully visible. At this point, perform a vertical spin jump. As you're falling back down, tap left and angle up, which is typically R, simultaneously. This will activate your shine spark and activate the door transition at the same time. You should see Samus in this animation when the door transition begins. Once the transition begins, let go of left, and instead just hold angle up, typically R, and the jump button. Samus should immediately perform a diagonal shine spark up and to the left when the next room loads. 
This will get her stuck properly in the door. Here's a clip of the whole sequence in real time. You'll then have to start x-ray climbing, but we'll discuss that more later. Now, let's learn how to explore the planet with Hyperbeam. To begin, head into Turian and save at the last save station, just before Mother Brain's room. Now, this will seem really weird, but trust me, it's necessary to pull this off. In a separate game file, save at the save station on the left in the main shaft of Green Brinstar. You can see the location here. Before you save, make sure your health is extremely low and that you have at least one super missile or five regular missiles. Prior to fighting Mother Brain, enter your green Brinstar file. Leave the save room, drop down, and enter the room on the left with all the fireflies that leads to a missile recharge station. Now just fall on the spikes to kill yourself. When the game over menu pops up, be sure to select no go to title. Now enter your save file in Lower Torium. Head into Mother Brain's room and proceed through like normal. In this video, I performed the Zebatite glitch just to get through the room faster, but that's not necessary. The first glitch used in this strategy is called the stand-up glitch, which you may be familiar with. It's a glitch that allows you to stand up and move around freely during the baby Metroid scenes, as opposed to being in a forced kneeling position like normal. There are multiple ways to pull this off, but I'll just show you the method that I find easiest. Before the Mother Brain fight, turn off your Varia suit. This will make Mother Brain's rainbow brain laser attack do twice as much damage to you compared to if Varia were equipped. It will do six energy tanks worth of damage without Varia versus three energy tanks with Varia. Proceed through the fight like normal up until Mother Brain is about to use the brain laser for the first time. An important thing to keep in mind is that you'll need to have at least 80 regular missiles when Mother Brain hits you with her brain laser because the attack will take away 75 missiles and you need five to open a door after the fight. Prior to the brain laser attack, Mother Brain will almost always try to hit you with at least one of her explosive red beam attacks. After she fires each of her red beams, look for her to slowly move her head forwards towards you. This is your cue that the brain laser is coming up. At this point, start running into her legs repeatedly to rapidly take damage until you have exactly seven pink or full energy tanks left. If you have less than seven pink tanks, use your reserve energy if you have some. You just need to have exactly seven pink tanks when the laser hits you. Afterwards, you'll notice that you can stand up from the kneeling position. You'll have one pink tank left at this point. Either let Mother Brain hit you a couple of times, or just run into her one or two more times until you have no pink tanks left. This will trigger her to charge up the laser again, which will cause the baby Metroid to come attack her. As the Metroid flies onto the screen, the game will try to force you to kneel again. This can be avoided by simply space jumping during this. Should you accidentally be forced to kneel, just activate the x-ray scope and you should be standing again. Keep in mind that right after the Metroid detaches from Mother Brain, the game will try to force you to kneel yet again. So just repeat the above at that point. Now we can move on to our second glitch, which involves using the space-time beam to transition out of Mother Brain's room after acquiring the Hyper Beam. At any point after the Metroid enters the room, equip the space-time beam, which is a combination of all the beams except for Wave. Pause the game and press R to enter the Samus menu. Unequip Wave Beam, and be sure that Charge, Ice, and Spazer are all equipped. Then highlight any one of your boot upgrades and press left and A simultaneously. If you did this correctly, Plasma should become equipped as well with the letters V-A-R next to it. Then unpause the game and wait for the Metroid to be killed by Mother Brain. Once the Metroid is dead, as you probably know, you'll begin flashing rainbow colors. Face to the right and position yourself such that if you jump straight up, you'll pass just in front of Mother Brain's head without hitting her. A few seconds after Samus starts flashing colors, 
jumps straight up to the ceiling. On your way back down, as you're passing Mother Brain's face, tap the shoot button to fire the space-time beam. Everything will slow down, the top of the screen will get all messed up, and Mother Brain will look really weird. You'll then fall through the floor into the lava, reappear at the top and fall through the room a second time, and finally land on an invisible platform in front of Mother Brain's head. Wait until Samus stops flashing colors and the room brightens again, because this is the point where you actually acquire the hyperbeam. Now, simply hold right, and Samus will slowly hop across the invisible platform until she hits an invisible transition block. You'll be transported very briefly into the room before Mother Brain, and then you'll automatically transition back into Mother Brain's room. At this point, you should have the hyperbeam and be out of the Mother Brain fight. Here's where the more difficult stuff begins. Getting stuck inside of doors and then x-ray climbing. Once you're back in the room before Mother Brain, open the door to Mother Brain's room with five missiles. In case you're wondering, the door is locked again because we used the space-time beam, which resets all doors, items, bosses, etc. Facing to the right, moonwalk to the left until you're very close to the door transition. An easy way to tell that you're in the right spot is if Samus' visor is fully visible, but barely, as shown here. Now, perform a dash vertical spin jump, as described earlier. Then, tap right on the D-pad when you're almost exactly halfway down the door. You can use the horizontal bars on the door as a reference. Tapping right in this situation is usually referred to as performing a wall jump check. To oversimplify it, this basically tricks the game into thinking you're actually touching the door transition blocks, even though you're not quite touching them during your spin jump. The timing of this unfortunately needs to be quite precise. This is the position at which you should tap right. The door transition will begin, and now you have to hold down on the D-pad until the next room has finished loading. If you did this correctly, Samus should be stuck in the door in the standing position, as seen here. If you do the wall jump check too high in the door, Samus will be forced into a crouched position, which prevents her from using the X-ray scope, as seen here. If you wall jump check too low in the door, she will simply not get stuck in the door, as seen here. Here's a clip of the whole thing performed correctly. Once you're successfully stuck in the door in a standing position, immediately crouch and begin to x-ray climb. Be sure that the morphing ball is turned off during your climb to avoid getting stuck. Another thing to be mindful of during this climb is that if a Rinka, the spaghetti-o looking enemy, hits Samus while she's standing, it will knock her out of the wall and you'll have to start over. So if there are Rinkas or turret shots nearby, just stay crouched and pause your climb until after they hit you. There's no rush here. Once Samus enters the ceiling though, enemies can no longer knock you out. Keep climbing until Samus's feet are no longer visible in the ceiling. At that point, two more successful x-ray climbs should be sufficient. To check if you've climbed high enough, press jump. You should see Samus jumping near the bottom right corner of the screen. At this point, turn back on your morphin ball and work your way left until Samus is right around this position. Jump up and hold left to land on this invisible platform. Slowly walk left until you fall down off the platform as seen here. Jump up from this position and press right briefly to land on this second platform. Now you need to be very careful as there are invisible blocks just above Samus that will crash the game if you hit them. So I would recommend getting into the morphing ball at this point and navigating by using short hops with the spring ball. Hop your way over to the right until you're in this little divot where you can't roll very far to the right or left. Roll as far left as possible in the divot, then do a short spring ball hop and press left briefly to land in this position. To check if you're in the right place, stand up and point your gun directly upwards, and it should look like this relative to the turret. This positioning does need to be quite precise in order to avoid crashing the game. 
If you're not in the right position, just get back into the divot to the right and try again. Once you've confirmed you're in the right spot, crouch and then press jump. You should be transitioned to the room behind Mother Brain and the escape sequence will be triggered. Now begin the escape like normal. Unfortunately, you'll notice that this trick does result in significant graphical glitches, but it's something you can get used to. The only way to fix the graphical issues is to save and reset the file, but this would take away your hyperbeam and replace it with charge, wave, and plasma, so we won't be doing that. After some time playing around in this glitched world, you'll get the hang of it. Enemies are fortunately exactly where they appear to be. Platforms, items, walls, and other blocks are slightly to the right of where they appear to be. Often, blocks that you destroy by shooting them or bombing them will appear to have not been destroyed, but they were. Doors will often appear to not open after you shoot them, but they do, and you'll hear the noise. You just have to run through. You'll get used to these things as you explore, and in my opinion, it actually makes it kind of fun. Now for the final glitch, which we reviewed earlier when the planet wasn't exploding. It's time for another x-ray climb to essentially escape the escape sequence. You may have seen this trick before if you've ever watched a Rambo or RBMBO Super Metroid speedrun. Rambo stands for Reverse All Mini Boss and Boss Order. They actually fight Mother Brain as the first boss. If you've played this game before, you know that during the escape sequence, all the doors that lead to outside of the escape route are locked, with the exception of the doors leading to the trapped animals. But this glitch will allow us to escape the escape route so that you can go explore the planet and kill bosses and mini-bosses with your brand new hyperbeam. You'll also notice that there is no countdown timer right now. That's because we never killed Mother Brain. So you have as much time as you need to pull off this trick. Compared to earlier, when we reviewed how to get stuck in this door, it's a bit harder now because of all the steam jets coming up from the ground and the fact that everything is shaking. The shaking and graphical glitches make it harder to tell when you're at the correct position relative to the door to perform the vertical spin jump. So it will take a bit of trial and error to get your positioning right. With regards to the steam jets, which make it harder to charge a shine spark, one technique that may help you is to allow yourself to get hit by a steam jet then immediately start dashing while you're temporarily invulnerable. Also, if you know how to perform a short charge, which is a very common speedrunning technique to charge a shine spark in a shorter distance, that may help too. Anyway, using the technique we reviewed earlier, get yourself stuck in the door, making sure Morphing Ball is turned off, and begin your x-ray climb. The way to tell when you're done climbing is to look at the mini-map in the top right corner of the screen. Once the map shows that you are fully within the black map tile above the pink tile where you started, you're done. You can double check that you're done by jumping at this point, and you should see Samus jump up from the bottom of the screen. Now re-equip your morphing ball and morph. You're now in the out of bounds area. To oversimplify things again, the game essentially thinks you're on top of the room you started in, even though it looks like Samus is below the room. Here's a shoddy hand-drawn map that I made of the out-of-bounds area to show you roughly where you are in the game's mind. As you can see, there are transition blocks below you and to the left, and these are what you want to run into. To accomplish this, just hold left on the D-pad for a brief moment, probably about a quarter to a half of a second, which will roll you off the ledge you're on, then immediately switch to holding right so that you hit those transition blocks. Keep holding right until the transition occurs. Ideally, you'll be transported to this tube, to the right of the room where your ship is. However, if your timing was slightly off, you may be transported to the room to the left of where your ship is. I'm not sure how to fix this if it happens, and so I normally just reset the game. This transition can be difficult because you can't actually see Samus' movement. It just takes some trial and error. The most important thing is to only hold left very briefly before switching to holding right. But once you're in the tube, you're home free. Now just grab a power bomb from these green crab-like enemies and head down through the power bomb door to the elevator room. Or you could head to the right towards wrecked ship. Either way, you can now go wherever you want. 
just try to avoid re-entering any part of the escape route at this point. Otherwise, you'll get locked in and have to do the escape the escape sequence technique again. Have fun exploring the planet and fighting the bosses and mini-bosses again, this time with Hyperbeam. The only mini-boss you cannot fight is Bomb Teresa because the escape sequence is still active and the animals are in his room. But honestly, who cares about Bomb Teresa? You also obviously can't fight the series station version of Ridley, but that would be boring anyway. He doesn't actually have a set amount of health like other bosses. You simply have to hit him with anything 100 times to defeat him and get him to drop the Metroid, pick it back up, and fly away. So it would take 100 Hyper Beam shots, just as it takes 100 pea shooter shots at the beginning of the game. It's interesting to see that some of the enemies you encounter, like the pink space pirates in Meridia, are actually invulnerable to the Hyper Beam. But most enemies will be blown away in one shot. Another interesting thing is that the eye door enemies that guard the boss rooms will now shoot out rainbow colored projectiles. I have no idea why this happens. Also, I won't show it here, but try doing a crystal flash with the hyper beam. It looks pretty cool. Just be sure not to save and reset the game at this point, because then you'll lose your hyper beam. You'll have to rewatch the intro and go back to series station because we use the space time beam. And once you leave series, the planet will still be blowing up. Fighting Kraid with Hyperbeam is interesting. Hyperbeam does a thousand damage, and Kraid has a thousand health. So one shot technically brings his health to zero, but he doesn't die. He'll just stand up, and you'll have to hit him again. You can tell the game knows that he's at zero health, because the spikes at the bottom of the room will disappear, as they normally do when he dies. If you want to perform a Kraid Quick Kill, Hyper Beam Edition, just shoot a super missile at the right time to lock his mouth in place, then pop him with the Hyper Beam. All the other bosses and mini bosses are straightforward, just go crush them. Thank you so much for watching, and please leave a comment below. If you have any questions about any of this, I'll be more than happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Enjoy your Hyper Beam.